Okay. Hi, everybody. So I, uh, I posed you with this Spider-Man question yesterday, and I just kind of want to walk through my explanation and my reasoning for whether or not this is realistic or not. I haven't solved this yet, um, so I'll be figuring out my thoughts along with you all. I'm going to lean towards the side that's not realistic, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to shift over to this. Um, but so what I did was I gathered some data, and I kind of drew out a little model for my uh, Spider-Man over here. So here's my Empire State Building, and then I found some data points that are going to help me support my reasoning and help me with my ideas. Um, so one data point that I found was how tall the tip of the Empire State Building is. So I found, and let me, I'm going to move this around a little bit, so hopefully it doesn't make too much noise. Um, but so I found, and actually, uh, that the height to the tip is 443.2 meters. So that was a pretty easy one to Google. So we know that we are at the starting height. Ooh, that's terrible. Um, oh, 443.2 meters. So that's our starting height. Um, another little piece of interest that I found was um, I kind of start swinging, I guess Spider-Man, I won't really do it. I start s swinging at about this little, uh, that piece over here. It kind of has this spot where it juts out, and that's about the point where I started swinging from. So uh, based on this picture, that looks like it's about, based on our scale, I found this on Wikipedia, um, it looks like it's about, well, if each one of these is 50, I don't know, maybe about 48 meters, maybe. So this seems like it's about 48 meters tall. So I'm able to figure out how um, how far I fell. And then the last little piece was, well, I needed to figure out um, if that distance that I swung from there was realistic or not. So what I did was I jumped into Google Earth, and Google Earth has this cool feature where you can actually measure things. So you can uh, choose this little ruler somewhere up here, and you can actually measure things. So I um, I measured the distance from about the middle. Sorry, Google Earth is a little uh, counterintuitive when you have a, just a laptop. Um, so I measured the distance from the middle to about this sidewalk over here. So I assumed that this is lining up pretty one-to-one -one with this Spider-Man universe. And I found that this path length is about 70 meters. So I measured it in meters. Um, so yeah, about 70 meters from this base where I was, from like the center tip, to the sidewalk where I landed. So about 70 meters, and that felt realistic based on what we saw in the video. Some say that I then went 70 meters. I was launched 70 meters as this projectile. So now what I'm going to do is do some math and some calculations to see if what happened in this situation in the game lines up to what happened in real life. And sorry that my graphics are kind of trash. Um, so what I'm going to start off with is this idea of working backwards. So from um, this point where I kind of started swinging, where I went from this vertical downwards velocity to this horizontal velocity, I'm going to assume that I had a perfect velocity transfer there, so I went from straight down to horizontal velocity. In real life, I'd probably lose a little bit of velocity, but I'm just going to assume, for my case, that my velocity perfectly transferred from this horizontal or vertically downwards to this horizontal velocity. So then I became this horizontally launched projectile, and I missed my target, but that's okay. So a horizontally launched projectile with no other forces acting on it we know how to solve questions about that. So I know that in this case, um, I ended up a distance, so if I'm using this, a distance of 70 meters away from where I started being a projectile from. So I ended up a distance of 70 meters. I know that in my uh, x direction, my horizontal direction, I have no acceleration. Uh, the time that I'm in the air for, I don't quite know that yet. And I also don't know my initial velocity. That's kind of what I want to look for, though. I want to look at my initial velocity and compare it to what we had in the game, um, or what it would be if we actually fell this height. So in the game world, we're saying our initial velocity is going to be something. So what I can do is I can set up an equation for that. I can use my kinematics. I have this x equals x naught plus v naught x t plus 1 half 
a t squared equation. I know in this case I have no horizontal acceleration, so x equals v naught times t. And I know that my x is 70 meters. And then what I'm looking at is, well, how much time was I in the air for? So I'm gonna, I could have counted frames in the game if I wanted to. What I'm gonna do is say, I'm gonna use my y equation. I'm gonna say, I start from a height of 48 meters, we said. Uh, my acceleration due to gravity, I'm gonna assume is the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My time is something that I wanna solve for. And then my, um, initial velocity in the y direction is just going to be zero. I was launched horizontally, at least that's what I'm going to assume. So I can set up another one of these kinematics equations, y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. And I'm going to say in this case, well, I end up at a height of zero. So zero equals 48 plus my v naught in the y direction was zero plus one half negative 9.8 times my time squared. And I'm able to figure out how much time I was falling for. So I can say 48 equals 4.9 t squared. And I need to get my calculator really quick. Like so we can say 48 divided by 4.9 is 9.79. Oh, that makes sense. And then square root of that is 3.1, so I can say my time is 3.13 seconds. So now I know how much time I was in the air for, theoretically, if this happened in real life. Um, so theoretically, my time in the air is 3.13 seconds. I can plug that time back into my horizontal equation. So I can say 70 equals v naught x times 3.13 seconds. So 70 divided by 3.13. So theoretically, my velocity on the way down should be 22.36 meters per second. If this projectile launch happened in real life, kind of without air resistance, but that won't make the biggest difference. Theoretically, when Spider-Man reached this point right here, he should have been traveling 22.36 meters per second, which means if we assume that the velocity was transferred from vertical to horizontal, at the very bottom of this jump, he should have been moving 22.36 meters per second. So now what we want to do is check to see how fast would he be moving in real life? Would it be this 22.36 meters per second? So we know that we have one object that is undergoing some sort of change. And when we have an object undergoing a change, we could do kinematics, but uh, it's kind of tricky. But energy was kind of our easier way to do this. So we can say, well, he's starting off, if we're making one of those LOL diagrams, he starts off, if we take this top point, he's got this gravitational potential energy. And then on the way down, he's got gravitational potential energy a little bit. And then that energy is transferred to kinetic energy. We're going to have some loss from the, uh, the air resistance and like thermal energy. But we're just going to assume that when he reaches this point, 48 meters above the ground, that his gravitational potential energy is turning into this kinetic energy. So let's figure this out. Let's uh, recall our equations for energy and see how fast he would be moving if he jumped off the Empire State Building. So we can set up, we have this m times g times the height equals m, I don't know how to spell this, height 1 and g height 2 plus one half mv squared. In this case, it's nice because mass is just gonna cancel out. So we can say g h1 equals g h2 plus one half v squared. Uh, we said, we looked it up, the tip of the Empire State Building is at a height of 443.2 meters. Um, the jumping off point is 48 meters plus one half v squared. So now we have enough to solve for that v. So I can say 9.8 times 443.2 is 4343.36 equals 9.8 times 48 or 70 plus one half v squared. So this minus 470.4 is 
to. Things are not looking good. Point half to be squared. So multiply this times 2. 7, 7, 4, 5, 0.92. Things to be squared. The square root. We have v is equal to 88.01 meters per second. So it looks like in this case it is not realistic because in real life if he was going to be launched 70 meters then he um, would have had to have been moving this 22 meters per second. But if he jumped off the Empire State Building he would have been moving 88.01 meters per second based on our conservation of energy. So based on my analysis from conservation of energy and how a projectile moves, these two do not align with each other, so I will say that this situation is unrealistic.